With a lot of commercial aircraft, the air starter is used in place of uh, an electric starter motor. The benefit of an air starter is that it has a much higher torque to weight ratio than an electric motor. So to generate sufficient torque to turn over uh, the gas turbine engine, we, we don't need to carry around as much weight. The other issue with uh, electric motors is that when we st we're starting a large gas turbine, there is a significant amount of current drawn from the battery uh, for the initial rotation of the engine. And something like um, you know a large turboprop, for example, could draw in excess of a thousand amps uh, just at that initial rotation of the engine. So larger engines, as you can imagine, might draw more. So um, the air starter then is used in these large engines and it works on the principle of taking air from either the APU or from a ground power unit or bleed air from one of the other engines. So the air comes into um, the starter and it passes over the, the guide vanes and onto the rotor blades. And when the air passes over the rotor blades, it causes the rotor to rotate. And the air then exits out through uh, the exit of the starter. Okay, so when the rotor blades are rotating, uh, it's connected to this sun gear of this epicyclic gear. And the sun gears cause the planet gears to rotate. And on this side of the epicyclic gear system, the planet gears are rotating this rotating annulus. So what I'd like you to imagine is, just imagine this rotor rotating. Actually, it's probably rotating in this direction. And the annulus rotating in, in, in that direction as well. Okay, so this is rotating. The difference is whatever RPM is here, the RPM at this point will be a lot less. It could be 10, 15 times less than, uh, than the rotor. So as the annulus rotates, it's connected to the engine drive via a sprag clutch. Now, because we have reduced the RPM here, that means we have increased the torque. Power is equal to torque times angular velocity. So if we assume that there's equal power uh, between input and output, and then if we have reduced the angular velocity, then we have increased the, the torque. So we're getting a high torque value here, and that should be enough to, to turn the engine over. Now, the, the starter is connected to the engine drive via this sprag clutch. And what happens is the, the starter begins to rotate, and that causes the engine to rotate. And as the engine rotates, fuel has been drawn into the engine, and air has been drawn in. And then the igniters ignite that fuel, and the engine then begins to rotate itself. And at some speed, called the self-sustaining speed, the engine no longer needs the starter. Okay, So we need to disengage the starter from the engine. And at that point, or just, just a little bit after self-sustaining speed, the sprag clutch disengages from the engine. So now the engine is, to, is free to rotate uh, of its own accord. And we can close down the, uh, the starter motor. Okay, so that's, um, that's air starters. They're uh, very common and used a lot uh, with gas turbine engines.